All right, let's finish off this video here. We've now dealt with um, the middle ground in between the first and second equivalence point here. Let's deal with the second equivalence point. So again, the initial reaction, H2SO4 plus NaOH. Initially, just peeling the first hydrogen off that HSO4, making HSO4 minus, a little bit of water, and some sodium. Here, again, I haven't changed this, so I have 0 0.5 molar. Oh, ah, what happened there? Try that again. Um, 0 0.5 molar and 0 0.1 liters for 0 0.05 moles of the H2SO4. Now I'm up to 200 milliliters, so 0 0.5 molar times 0 0.2 liters, and we get up to 0 0.1 moles of NaOH. Quantitative acid-base reaction, meaning that all 0 0.05 moles of this, my limiting reagent, will be used up. And I will have 0 0.05 moles of my NaOH left over. And I will create on the way by 0.05 moles of my HSO4 from nothing. So I have 0.05 of that total. And uh, H2O and Na plus, that doesn't matter. Now in the secondary reaction, the HSO4 minus still acting as an acid, reacting with NaOH to, with its second proton, forming SO4 2 minus plus H2O minus plus more sodium that we don't care about. So I got uh, 0 0.05 molar of this and 0 0.05 molar of this. And what we can see now is why we call this the second equivalence point. See if this is reaction one and this is reaction two, we are at equivalence here in reaction two or the second equivalence point. And what that means is that this will react away completely, and so will this, leaving me with zero HSO4 and zero NaOH, and creating 0 0.05 molar SO4. SO4 to minus is the conjugate of HSO4. So if this is a weak acid, this is a weak base. That means when it reacts with water, it's a proton acceptor, forming HSO4 minus and OH minus and increasing the hydroxide population. So here, we're gonna have a hydroxide population. We're gonna swing that pH straight through seven all the way up to something higher. This is a conjugate process, so we don't have the KB for this directly, so we'll have to use the Ka and the Kw for water. So Kw is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. Kb, or Ka, sorry, is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 2, which means my Kb for the conjugate process is 1 times 10 to the negative 12. So with all that in hand, I have 0 0.05 moles of this. I forgot I need that in a concentration because I'm dealing with an equilibrium problem, N over V. So 0 0.05 moles, I gotta look to my total volume. So I get 200 plus 100 for a total of 300 milliliters or 0 0.3 liters. And that gives me a concentration of 0 0.167 molarity. So with that, let me just double check that, I don't know why. Yeah, okay. So that is my concentration of SO4, 0 0.167. 6, 7, there we go. Don't care about my water. Uh, HSO4 minus, I reacted it all away, so my initial concentration is zero, ignoring the native population of my hydroxides. I can see that the constant, the equilibrium has to shift to the right, so this is going to be 0 0.167 minus x, and this is x, and this is x. Initial change equilibrium. 
Now here, 0 0.167 divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 12 does meet my condition for the 100 rule. It's actually giving much greater. And so what that means is that the change that I expect to see here is going to be very small. So 0 0.167 minus x is going to be approximately equal to 0 0.167. And that means if I write my KB expression, the concentration of bisulfate, concentration of hydroxide over the concentration of sulfate, ignoring water, it's constant. Then I've got 1 times 10 to the negative 12 equals x times x divided by. 0.167, it would have been minus x, but because of the 100 rule, I can ignore the small amount of change. So just solving this directly, I can see that my x value works out to 4.09 times 10 to the negative 7. So I got my x squared, I've multiplied that up and square rooted, and that's what I got. So with that in hand, that's my population of hydroxide. I've got to be a little careful here. So if I log that, I'm not going to get a pH, I'm going to get a pOH. So I'll go log that, and it works out to 6.4. So if my pOH is 6.4, my pH is going to be 14 minus 6.4 which works out to 7.6. So for this equivalence point, and going back to this graph, now I'm going to go through a much bigger swing. My value here went right past 7, and it's up at about 7.6. Now what's going to happen is this graph's going to go up much higher, because in the final situation that I have to deal with here, I've done E1, E2, those are my equivalence points, now I'm going to go to when the sodium hydroxide is going to overwhelm the whole system and I'm going to be left with a strong base. The strong base is going to have a very high pH, so we'll, we'll work through that now. Let's do a quick erase here, if you'll uh, be patient with me. I don't need to go lower than this because I'm not going to use this much space. And I'm just going to leave these, nope, I'm going to leave this reaction in and leave the next reaction in and hopefully I can get through this before I run out of battery. So, I've got 0 0.05 moles of this. That's the same as it's been in every other step here. But now I'm going to deal with my 0 0.25. So I have a concentration of 0 0.5 times a volume of 0 0.25 liters, leaving me with 0 0.125 moles. Acid-base reaction happening to completion. So I'll use up my limiting reagent of H2SO4, leaving me with 0 0.7. Sorry, let me try that again. 0 0.075 moles of NaOH and no H2SO4 and creating 0 0.05 moles of HSO4. Now dealing with the secondary reaction, HSO4 minus plus NaOH. Going to SO4 2 minus plus H2O and some sodium. Uh, I got uh, 0 0.05 moles of this created in the last step, 0 0.075 moles of this remaining, not used up. And so what I can see here in my final situation is my HSO4 is still limiting. Reaction happening quantitatively, so it's going to use up all of the available HSO4. And here's the key, now I have remaining NaOH. NaOH is a strong base, which means that this reaction, where it's disassociating to produce hydroxide in solution, happens to completion. So if any of this is left, 
these weak species over here don't matter. So I produce some of this. Yeah, I have some SO4 two minus, which will also act as a base, but its effect on the hydroxide or hydronium concentration is so low in comparison to the strong base that I'm going to ignore it. So I got 0.025 moles of this. It's a quantitative reaction, which means I have 0.025 moles of my hydroxide. My final total volume, 250 plus 100, is going to be 350. So if I've got 0 0.025 moles divided by my volume of 0.35 liters, I'm going to get a concentration of 0.0714 mole. Very convenient. I'm already at hydroxide here. I don't have to worry about an equilibrium or anything. That's the nice thing about strong acids or bases. So if I just log that amount, I get a careful, not a pH, but a pOH because I have a hydroxide population of 1.15. That's my pOH, my pH, 14 minus that. Works out to 12.85. And that's where I am in that final spot on my graph. I'm almost up to 14 here. I'm sitting at 12.85. So initially, the H2SO4 dominates. In this region, I'm dealing with HSO4 population, which is a weak acid, which is why it's in this range in between 1 and 7. Then I drive straight through a high, the, the second equivalence point, which is pretty close to pH 7 because SO4 2 minus is a pretty weak base. And then finally I drive right up to where I have remaining NaOH and uh, a resulting very high pH. So those are the five stages for that polyprotic titration.